Hello comrades, it's Dudas Rakan here, bringing you an impression of Star Drive. Now this is a game that I've played since the late beta. I thought it was important to actually finish the game before I released my impressions of it, and I thought it was also important to actually try out some of the mods before I give you my impression of the vanilla. A lot of other reviewers have given this game a really low score. I think it's got a Metacritic score of 50 now, and I have to say, I don't think it really deserves it. It has a lot of problems, I have to admit, but it's still pretty good. But when you compare it to a lot of other 4X strategy games, how does it really compare? Is it as action intensive as something like Sins of the Solar Empire? Is it, uh, does it have as good management ability as, say, Endless Space? And to most of those cases, I had to say no. And does it really look all that beautiful? Well, it doesn't look bad. I mean, does it look as good as Sense of Solar Empire? I can't really say. I mean, if you look at the textures of the planets here, I mean, uh, it doesn't actually look that good. And then when you go into the actual planetary management, does it look that good? Well, let's see. It looks kind of like this. So yeah, it's not exactly beautiful when you look at it from this kind of perspective but yet yeah, it's still a fun game it's fun because the diplomacy is unique each race you go against actually acts like an individual race as opposed to just you know another computer and then of course when you get into the actual customization when you go into the shipyard you have this these massive fully customizable ships let me actually, let me not, not take the time to actually build that. Let me just show you the Super Star Destroyer that I created. Mark II, of course, because as you advance more technology, you want to put the most advanced equipment. But if you, of course, if you remove a ship, then you're going to actually run into problems where in future, in future builds, in future games, you can keep the lower advanced ship so that you can build it earlier on. And then, of course, you can send it back to your planet and rebuild it. But, as you can see, all this customization, all these antimatter reactors, now each one has different stats. For instance, even though these antimatter reactors are cheap for how much power they produce, if you destroy one of these, they blow up enormously. And then, of course, you have ones like the main engineering, which produces even more power which also provides some repair and I think it actually has some no it doesn't I thought it had some crew no it doesn't provide any defense but still point is that this this game has tons of customization you can customize everything about your ships and I don't really know that many 4x strategy games that allow you this level of customization I know endless space said oh you can add this weapon oh you can add you know defensive capabilities here and there to manage the weight and so on but then of course the problem was is that you couldn't actually fight now here of course you can fight and you can also initiate planetary bombardment uh which is so satisfying oh yeah i just killed like seven no i killed 0.2 people that's 0.2 billion by the way it's in billions in, in this game so yeah, I just killed 200,000 people, and uh, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> they were Scotsmen, so nobody give a shit. No, I'm just kidding. I, I'm actually part Scottish. Uh, that was actually a joke from a reference to some song I can't even remember. But, with all that said, well first, before I get away and start talking about something else, let me show you some actual combat, preferably. If I can find something to kill. Ah. I see something to shoot at. It's not going to be a massive though. Come on, I need an enemy fleet. Here's the problem. I've actually loaded a game where I've killed tons of things. And I've pretty much annihilated the enemy to where my tech is just so much better than theirs. That I don't really know where I can find them to kill them. I'm going to have to load a different game, man. Yes, I am. Alright, I'm going to load a more advanced game. Just because I know where a particular fleet is. So I can actually show you my Super Star Destroyers in action. 
And the combat in this game is, is, is quite good. I mean, if you plant shield generators, they only cover a certain area. If you plant armor, they actually have to shoot wherever you place the armor for it to actually be effective. You can't place armor on the ass of your ship and then have them shoot the front of your ship and expect your armor to do anything. You have to actually have armor on your front of your ship if you're actually expecting to take frontal damage. Which is cool. That level of customization is not something I've seen in pretty much any game. Okay, here we go. Vader's Fist. As some people might actually uh, know this reference. But anyway, let us go and annihilate this wimpy fleet. At least you'll be able to see them shoot. Unfortunately, you can't see where all the guns are. I would love it if if you could like see like turrets and so forth, but I think he hasn't done that because he's actually added I'm saying he because there's one guy that made this entire game and he has made it where you can actually design your own ships. So, it may have been just too complicated for his editor to do that. Yes. Oh yeah, look at all that. Frame rate's actually dropping because of this. This is actually pretty hilarious. Oh, look at this, they're cowering. And this is something I also want to say. This different species react to you very differently. Now these guys get afraid very quickly, and when they're afraid, they're going to do this right here all the time. They're going to just cower. Now if you go up against the samurai space bears, the Kularathi, they're not going to do this. They're not going to get afraid as easily, and they're also, when they're afraid, they're less likely to actually try to sign a peace treaty unless, you know, well, they would probably still do it at the state that I'm at because I'm annihilating them, but I know it's less likely. As you can see, these these little fighters here have to stand no, absolutely no chance against me. But as you can see right here on this little bitty thing, you actually have to destroy little modules in the ships. So think about the Super Star Destroyer here. All these modules right here have to be destroyed, or at least like 75% of them have to be destroyed in order to, for you to take down the ship itself. Now, so you've seen the combat, it's, it's pretty intensive. Now, one thing that got them a negative rating as far as actual game design is that what I'm doing right here, just clicking on the ships and then right clicking on the planet, when the game was released, you couldn't do it this simply. You would actually have to click on the planet, click on this flag, click on bombardment, and initiate bombardment that way. And if, you, if there are troops nearby, if you want troops to land, you can't just grab a bunch of spacecraft filled with troops, right click on the planet, and have the troops land. No, you actually have to click on this flag, click on troops, and land all troops. Now, I don't want you, I don't want a bombardment to resume once I send my troops there. And my troops are just gonna wipe them out because I've just got so many of them. But. And there's another thing is like ground combat, I mean, get away, Super Star Destroyer. Get, up, get, up, get your fat ass out of the way. Get your fat ass out of the way. Ground combat is not very satisfying. And pretty much, this is the only control you, you have right here. You can order your troops to, like, move. Did I just order my troops to attack my own troops? That, 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 makes, that makes so much sense. Yeah, this is, this is it. This is all you can do. So... You know, whatever. So that, that's that's probably a mark against it. And as far as tech trees go, I'm playing the vanilla right now. This is a vanilla game, even though there's a lot of modding. And I'll talk about modding in a little bit. But the tech tree is not very large. So this means that you're going to be able to research pretty much everything very quickly. And if you use your agents right here to steal tech from your enemies, then you're going and look at how many top this is these are all max level agents and I, they got this way fairly quickly so if you still tech from your enemies you're going to have everything researched very quickly and you're going to have such an advantage over the AI it's pretty ridiculous now they did add some 
I believe they added some uh, improvements to the AIs on the higher difficulty. Right now it's on medium. And I have to say the medium AI is a bit of a pushover. It is a good AI though to learn the game. I have to say that. That way they're not completely dumb. And they will actually attack you and everything. And will actually move out in what you want them to be. So they're not just more complete morons. But if once you know the game, medium AI is really stupid. Hard AI seems to cheat, but I don't know that for certain. I will say one problem emerges in this game that if I show you the shipyard once again, if I go to, let's see, capital. Uh, no, we want to load. Now, if you look right here, these are both designs that I've created, right? Now, if you look at Let's see, Corvette. You have these right here, these hunters. These are not designs that I've created. Anything with this, this cross out right here is, is a design that I've created. All these right here are designs that I've created. None of these designs I've created. Now that's good, right? There's, there's the default designs, the designs that the creators have made for this type of ship that the AI can use even if you've never played that race. A problem emerges in the very late level ships that they don't have any default designs. Which means if the computer researched capital ships and I have not played that race, then they're not going to have a design for that ship so they can't make that ship. And if they do make that ship, it's, it's probably, I don't even know what they would do. How, how does the AI work if they don't have a design? So I get to a point, if you get to the point where you have capital ships, you may just have a flat out advantage if you never played any of the other races. So if all you do is play human, and you go up against all non-humans, of course, then the enemy is not going to be able to build the main, the final capital ship, so you're always going to have an advantage, which is really weird. That's really weird. But the thing is, is if you play another race, and this is the cool part, if you play another race, and then go against humans after I've played humans this is the I am humans in this in this particular game if I go against humans as another race then they're gonna use my ships that I construct so there's like a semi learning AI in this game which is really cool because I actually played as the Palmer and I actually went to war against the humans and I got my ass kicked by my own ships also they were actually using my own Corvette designs and everything and I just got annihilated because as it turns out the Palmer these dudes the oh, polyps excuse me I keep on calling them Palmer because that's their home planet the polyp the polyps ship design is actually terrible in comparison to most other races I think the one with the most modules is probably the uh, space bears and annihilate this planet what are you standing there for who knows how long they've been shot at this is this is another real problem I have to say is that there's no way to for your ships to automatically try to take out a uh, ship based um ship based weaponry while this game is a reminds me quite a bit of like Star Wars rebellion the lack of control over your of some of the ships in as far as combat goes is bad you can't for instance like click on the planet or left click here attack there and say initiate planetary bombardment only on military facilities and that's what I would like to do I, w I don't want to wipe out the population because then the planet's not going to be useful to me once I break this shield generator core all the everybody's going to be dead I would, though, like to knock out this bloody uh, sur surface to space missile missile system so that they'll stop killing me. So that's a bit of a problem. Another problem is that you can't send troops quickly to the planet. The only way to send troops to a planet is that you have to make them at a planet, you have to launch them into orbit, and then... <laughs> Once they get over the planet and start getting shot at by the surface to, plan to space missile system, then you can finally land your troops. Which is really janky, and it also makes it where your troops end up getting annihilated a lot of the times because you're not paying attention to them, because 
the galaxy in this game is, is quite large, so you don't want your attention to be just on a small group of troops you're just sending for basically harassment. You want them to just send, you just want to send your troops, them automatically land, and then forget about the troops. Maybe they'll take the planet, maybe they won't. But you stop production when you invade a planet, so maybe that's all you want to do. So there's lots of automatic things that cannot occur in this game. And it, ma it makes it drag, makes the end game drag out longer than it is. Now, I've completely annihilated the enemy's fleet. That's why they're not fighting back. You're like, why aren't, why aren't the enemy fighting back in this game? It's, it's like they're just, they're just taking it. It's because I annihilated their fleet already. I just wiped it out because my ships are so much, so superior. Super, nothing can beat Super Star Destroyer at this point. Of course, if I went up against myself as a different race, then I had be another ship design versus the Super Star Destroyer, and then that would be really cool. Finding your own ship designs would be really awesome. And I like that innovation in this game. Then, then the problem is that, okay, well, can you move beyond this? Can you go against other players with their designs? And the answer is no. This is a single player only game. And for a game that costs thirty dollars, and that is single player only, uh, I, I can understand why people are hesitant to buy this game. At the same time, I really like it, and from the amount of modding support I've seen on this game, I'd say it's it's pretty awesome. I would say, and I, I want to show you that now. I've I've shown you a game. And I've beaten, I've already won this game before, so there's no point in me continuing. But let me show you. If you go to mods now. Wow, all the mods have disappeared. Hmm, this is quite interesting. Now there was a Tim's mod right here. I can't show you it now. This is actually very disappointing. I actually had Tim's mod installed in here and it, it's since disappeared. This is actually disappointing and actually shoots this game in the foot right now but there's a lot of modding support and you can quickly install mods using this feature right here if they would actually pop up I'm sorry I can't I can't show you this but uh, you can quickly click on a mod and then just click load normally this is what it what you would do and then it would just change your game and install automatically so you don't have to worry about it another cool thing is you click modding tools you can actually create your own ships. You see right here, you got internal, internal ordnance, ordnance, engine. Actually, it says outside. It should be ordnance, I have to say. That's what I always thought O stand, stood for because, and when you actually create your games, your uh, ships in, in the game, O is where you put the ordnance and then IO is where you can put internals or ordnance. So this is quite strange when it says outside. Okay, whatever, whatever you say, bro. Whatever you say. But as, as, as you can see right here, you can actually design your own ships in the main menu. So, you can do this. You can save whole. Load model. So you can actually find a model. And I hope it doesn't. Okay, good. It's not, it's not crashing. Anyway, you can load a model for your ship and everything. And so, just from the menu, you can create your own ships. Now this game has a huge custom customizability. So for so in that case, this game has a lot of replay value. So for thirty dollars, or if it goes down a little bit, maybe twenty dollars, maybe fifteen. I bought it for twenty five because I bought pre order. So I've been playing this a while, and I have to say it's it's worth the money if you like a four X game. If you like four X games in general, then I'd say Star Drive is definitely game to buy. It's entertaining. If you if you missed games like Star Wars Rebellion, then I'd say you probably are gonna really like this. You might have some nostalgia because you can you can customize the size of the galaxy and everything. I can show you that too. You say new game. You got your races here, you know, I'm tearing right now, so you can customize your races. Maybe you don't want a prototype flagship ship. Maybe you don't want industrious meticulous people maybe you want corrupt wasteful but mercantile people i don't know your astronomers your or, or 
Cybernetic Terrence. That's great. You're stupid. Cybernetic Terrence. <laughs> you can customize your race. So, that's good. So, customizability, this game's got it fairly well. Now, I would like to see some more options in, in race development. I think there are quite a bit more in Endless Space. So, I would like to see more in this game. Uh, but see where's it rule options is that it where's hold on hold on hold on where's my uh game settings okay there we go there used to be a button you'd press here and it would open up this right here so they apparently they've changed around things in a recent patch that i didn't notice uh but yeah i played it on hard and hard is pretty hard i got my ass kicked by my own ships though I have to say that. I didn't keep killed by anyone but the Terrans who had my ship designs. So I might have to say that the default ship designs need some improvement. They're pretty inefficient. And of course, you, that what you just saw in that game a while ago, that was a normal solar system. You can have abundant, crowded, and then large and epic galaxy size. So you can get up to about rebellion size galaxies almost i would say almost they're not quite as crowded as the is the uh clusters in rebellion because i think in rebellion there are about i don't know eight ten planets in each cluster and this one they're they're not that many eight is the most i've ever seen but usually there's only like two three planets so it's it's pretty random as far as that goes even when you set it on crowded uh but other than that, another criticism I might have is that I need to show you right now. I'm going to load an early game as the Kurathi, as the Space Bears. Actually running your colony, building up your your bases and everything, it's it's not that complicated. It's It just looks like this. You have your buildings, you plant them here and there and everywhere. And you don't have happiness to manage. You don't have popular to support to manage. Only way to have rebellion on your planets is if an enemy agent starts it. So that's a little bit, a little bit limiting in regards to actually planetary control because there's a lot of management aspects that are just taken out of the game. I wish they were kept in there and I think that's something that needs to be developed. And I have to say is that Daniel Zico, the CEO of Zero Games, and the one who gave me permission to make this video, and I'm not associated with him at all, he has been trying to, you know, support the mod the modding scene from what I, from what I've observed, and he seems to keep on developing this game, which is good. One guy developing this game, I mean, kudos to him. But there still needs to be quite a bit of work. Now I have to say is that the biggest complaint people had was that late game lag. But this right here in my in my game, this was the late game. And I didn't really see any, you know, serious lag in this game. And I never have. I've actually played this game for eight hours straight at a time. So you, sh you should say that I, I kind of like this game. I do recommend it. It is quite fun. Even without the multiplayer. And with the multiplayer, I mean, before today, I, I maybe I'm disconnected from the internet at this exact moment. I don't know. But before today, there was like, you could load mods immediately. And I have to say, it's probably going to have a huge modding scene in this game. And you're probably going to be able to actually, you know, have a multiplayer mod fairly soon and you're probably going to have huge race differences and probably going to have you know planetary management mods to actually add popular support and things like that so I imagine that the modding scene may be get as big in this game as it was in I'll say oh. Not Medieval Total War. Why am I thinking Medieval? Medieval Total War did have a big modding scene. But I'm thinking more on the lines of Mountain Blade. I think it's going to be that big. And this is a good space game. And I have heard people say that they're going to turn, they're going to do maybe a Star Battle mod, maybe a mod for, you know, uh, 
Or you're a single ship flying through the galaxy and you're modifying your... Go away. Go away, plant people. Go away. Shut up. And, uh... <laughs> Bloody pit plants. I don't know. Bloody pot plants always harassing me. <sighs> anyway. I'm hopeful with the modding scene, but... If you like 4X strategy games, I do recommend this. I don't think this is a 50. By any means. I've certainly enjoyed it. I've played it quite a bit. Oh, there is one other problem with this game that I've observed, and I should show you that here. Now, okay. As you can see, these ships are not traveling into warp. There is warp in this game, but they're not doing it. They're not doing it because... Hold on, where's your advanced settings? They're not doing it because of this right here. They have fighters, they have corsairs. Or corvettes following them. If I click this, they will jump into warp and they won't wait for their fighters to go back into the hangar bays. Now that's good because you don't want a delay in the middle of space flight, especially if your corvettes already have warp drive of their own. You don't need them to wait. See, my corvettes can immediately jump into uh, hyperspace faster than my own capital ships, as you would imagine. So there's no need for that. The problem is that every time you you load a game, all this is taken away. As soon as you save and load this game, all these things that I did, unclicking this, is going to return back to its default setting. So, once again, all my capital ships are going to be really slow. And that's a bit of a problem. And I think traders are that way as well, where they will stop trading. Apparently colonization isn't halted, but I know traders have stopped trading sometimes. Okay, well maybe I'm wrong. Look, these, this guy has continued trading, even though after I've uh, left the game. I mean, oh, this guy hasn't. This guy has stopped. So he's, okay, this is a good example. So apparently, what is there, like a memory? Apparently, it says awaiting orders. He has food saved up in his stores, but he stopped trading spontaneously. See, now he's delivering it. See? There's just this weird thing where after you save and then load the game, your orders are just forgotten. It's just really weird. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of bugs they need to fix still. Maybe this can be helped in a mod. But I would say this is a great game. And I would support it. I definitely think that it doesn't deserve a 50. It deserves maybe an 80 or something like that. I know I'm repeating myself. But this this level of customization probably makes the game worth it right here. Just designing your ships however you want to. I mean, you know, making making your own traders. This is actually, I think this is, let me see. If I show you a frigate. Yeah, this frigate, frigates are not supposed to be trading vessels. But I made one into a trading vessel. So I don't need to build a medium freighter because a frigate can actually carry more cargo than, you know, an actual large freighter. Or a medium freighter at least. But these are cheaper. See, so look at that. Large freighter versus. Where's the. F freighter, 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 freighter. I guess it'd be large transport. Okay, so that's a large one. So this one's bigger. But then it's got, look at this, it's got power problems. Once again, default build, there's power problems. This means that there's not going to be any defense. It's not going to have defense or repair working in this ship because it doesn't have any power. It's so weird. You don't need to put it there. You don't need to put it there, man. You can just put your, put your command right here or right there somewhere. Come on. Hell, you can put it there, and then you can surround it by little ones. You can put this one right there. I don't know. You could make it work. I don't know. Star Drive, people. Hopefully, they'll add more to the game. And if they do, I'll be sure to make additional videos, maybe some plays of the mods. But until then, I've been Dudustrakan. Dasvidaniya, au revoir and so on and so forth. Goodbye.